Hello traders, and welcome to part two of hunting liquidation prices for traders on BitMEX. So part one in this series, we looked at XBT USD, the perpetual swap, and how we can, one can calculate where traders are likely to be liquidated and what one can what, what you can do if you do see other traders getting liquidated and how you can take advantage of other people's misfortune. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a similar thing, but with altcoins on BitMEX instead of looking at XBT. Uh, this was Patreon suggested, uh, as you can see, to talk about BitMEX altcoins. And I actually found that the strategy and, and the way it works for BitMEX altcoins is a lot more clear for me than for XBT, probably because when we look at Bitcoin, there are a lot of factors in, impacting the price. But when we look at a coin like ADA or XRP, TRX, these kinds of coins aren't going to have as many factors at play as Bitcoin would. So these liquidations may have a larger weight. Let's jump into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the max amount of leverage that is available for every major altcoin on uh, BitMEX. So as you can see here, uh, Ethereum, you get up to 50x, and you only get 20x on the other altcoins, the, the five you can see there. And this is just a quick liquidation, liquidation cheat sheet for the 20x. So for those five coins up there, these are the price changes uh, that would be required for each amount of leverage. So if you went 20 times um, longer short, then you'd be liquidated with a 2.5% move. And I found this by using the BitMEX calculator, uh, which you can use as well if you go to the BitMEX site. Click on any altcoin that has maximum 20x leverage. And if you just type in entry price one, uh, maximum leverage 20, then you can see that this is the amount of uh, difference by percentage that you'd get. So with LTCH19, uh, which is the only 33x, uh, it is actually a minus 1.5 or a plus 1.5% move that would liquidate a trader if they had chosen to use that. And finally, uh, probably the second most popular uh, traded instrument on, on BitMEX is FUSD. And Ethereum, you would get liquidated with only a 0.95% move if you went long with full maximum leverage on Ethereum. All right, so what we talked about last week was what we can do to target liquidations in the three ways that we can do so. And with altcoins, I would not really recommend one and two. Uh, the reason being is that the amount of liquidations that occur on altcoins is going to be a lot less than the amount of liquidations that occur on XPT. Uh, so what may happen is if you calculate a liquidation price, you may find that some traders don't even get liquidated because there's not as much volume and enough um, highly leveraged traders on, on these coins as there are uh, XPT USD up to 100x. But what I actually did find is that these in these altcoins, there still were retail traders who were doing maximum leverage and getting liquidated left and right. Uh, so that's why I think that it's typically best just to trade against a recent liquidation for these. But maybe you don't want to do that for XBT. Maybe you want to do these two when looking at XBT USD liquidations of other traders. And if we're looking at other liquidations for uh, altcoin traders, then this may be the stronger way to go just to wait for liquidation to occur, set a limit order and try to get that limit order filled. Um, meaning that if a long got liquidated because price went down, we would want to set a buy limit order to try to get our buy limit order filled because we expect that a, a short term reversal will occur after liquidation. This is where we're going to be getting our data from. Um, some users may have seen this before, but this is on Twitter. Uh, this is BitMEX wrecked. And it, it looks pretty meme -y, you know, like a, like a meme. Um, you know, you got the Shrek, the Doritos, Mountain Dew, <laughs> all, all of the good, good stuff. But I did find that there actually weren't that many tools to look for historical liquidations of altcoins besides this. Uh, so if you actually do know a site or, or a tool that gives you access to historical liquidations of altcoins on BitMEX, then please comment it. Uh, because I've been using this uh, Twitter feed because it reports all liquidations for all coins on BitMEX. All right, so let's go take a look at some examples. So to start with, we have TRX H19. So this is the main uh, contract for TRX. And recall, 
that TRX has a liquidation change of 2.5%. Uh, what that means is, you, you can see here, TRX is a maximum 20 times leverage. And if you go long, you'll be liquidated with a 2.5% price move against you. Now, if we go here, we can see that someone had gotten uh, liquidated at 612. And, and I drew a horizontal line so that you guys could see that. Now, you can also see that when these liquidations occur, uh, they're typically going to be accompanied by one minute high volume bar uh, as the liquidation is forced. And there's a spurt of volume as you know price hits stop losses. Uh, price may induce other traders to, to short here maybe even. Uh, and when this occurs, this would have actually been a very good time to put a limit order around this area, a buy limit order, uh, because this is what had happened. You know, price went right back up. Now, I'm not saying that every time someone gets liquidated, price is going to reverse. It's just typically, more often than not, price is going to reverse after liquidating a trader. So, you know, th this is not a sure thing. You're going to want to use other indicators like MDR to look at the order book uh, pressure. You may want to use some technical indicators even. You may want to look at volume. But this can be a really good secondary indicator uh, to give you bias to enter extra trade based on other traders getting liquidated. Uh, and then here I just showed it. You can see that I had assumed that uh, someone may have bought at 628 because if they bought at 628, they would be liquidated, you know, 2.49% down is 612. And remember that 612 is where that trader got that got liquidated. So it was assuming if they had gone 20x, they probably bought here or here and got liquidated there. So just probably what had happened. And if the person who got liquidated is in is in uh, is watching this video by some, you know, miracle, then uh, comment that <laughs> that that is true. All right, so we got another one here. This is ADH H19, sell 186.044 at 1182. So what this means, because I don't think I've explained this yet, is this is the contract we're talking about. Sell means a long getting liquidated, because you know it says liquidated long, so they have to sell. It would be the opposite for liquidated short. It would say buy. This is how many contracts at 1182. This price is just saying, I mean, this E minus 05 is just saying how many zeros. And as you can see, there are, uh, four zeros and then, uh, and then a number. Uh, so you can really, what I do is I just read this first number because I already have a reference that, you know, ADA BTC is gonna be around 1195. I know that means 0000, 000 1195 and with, you know, TRX, I know that it's gonna have uh, six zeros, I think. Man, it's hard to see that, five zeros. Five zeros on TRX and um, yeah, so it says minus 06. So that's what those those mean. It's actually pretty straightforward, just 1182. And when you see sell 186,000, one thing you can actually do to quantify and say, well, how much does that really mean at all? Is we can multiply this number by this number. So if we do 186,044, I'm going to go to ADA, H19. And I would recommend you guys do this when you see traders getting liquidated um, because you can actually find out how much, uh, how how much volume was actually liquidated. So I'm doing 186,044, which is how many contracts were uh, liquidated here, as you can see, at 1182, but I'm just gonna do it multiplied by 88,919 uh, here. All right, so we get 2.247 BTC. So what this basically means is that 2.247 worth of Bitcoin was liquidated on ADA, okay? And we can continue to, to look at that. So that's a, a decent amount for ADA. All right. And price did reverse after uh, that happened. We got, liqu we got liquidations at 11.82 on that candle there, that really strong bearish candle. Great time to put a buy limit order. Price soared after liquidating that trader. Here's another one of a liquidated long on EOS H19, uh, sell 1911 at 62.61. I marked 62.61 there. Same story, became support, price price, uh, price did move up. And I don't think that's a lot of BTC, uh, I mean XBT volume. You know, if we go to EOS H19 and then multiply uh, 1911 by that number, we can get, we can see how many XBT. It's only about, well, it's, it's 1.23 Bitcoin. So that's, um, it's not nothing, but uh, it's a me medium to smaller size liquidation, 1.23, as you can see. 
And this is one thing that I also wanted to show for the, the people who like to calculate these liquidation prices for these altcoins, is I know that this person got liquidated at 62.61. Now, I know EOS is a coin that only offers 20x leverage maximum. So that means that I'm tiering it at uh, 10 or 20 that this person could have entered. Meaning, if this person had entered long for maximum leverage here, they would be liquidated at exactly 62.61. Or what I actually found a lot more likely is if this person had entered with maximum leverage at 10 times, which conveniently, conveniently looks like a high volatility, high volume top right here with some consolidation, uh, then they would be liquidated here. So from this data and, and from how this looks, I'm expecting that what probably ended up actually happening here is that someone had gone 10 time, 10x on EOS H19 uh, at the top and then been, had been liquidated here and then price went back up. And you can see at this time, price was at 64.07, right? Now price is 64.73. Uh, yeah, that actually became the bottom here. As you can see, price continued to go down until we got that beautiful liquidation and then uh, price went up and liquidated some other traders up here. You know, lovely. People losing money is a, is a way that a trader can make money. As sinister as that as that sounds. And again, guys, I got the 10x from um, uh, here. So 10x would require, if you had gone long, it would take a 7.5% move downward to liquidate you. So that's how I got that. That's how I calculated that horizontal line that says 10x. All right, we got another one here. Uh, I'm just going rapid fire with these, trying to. We have a liquidated long in FUSD, sell of 74 1385 at 116. This does not mean, <laughs> repeat, this does not mean that they sold uh, 74,000 uh, Ethereum. That's because it's price in USD. It's not price in XBT. Uh, so that's $74,385 worth of Ethereum being liquidated. Not 74,000 Ethereum, because that would be insane and that would have a much, much stronger reaction than just this, you know, boom, back up. Uh, but as you can see, 116 here uh, was the liquidation price for this person. They got liquidated and one minute later, price just went right back up. Reverted back to the mean as what can typically happen when you get a liquidation, you either see price reverting back to the mean, price moving on high momentum for a bit, then reversing, price just instantly reversing sometimes. Um, but again, I, I really do want to stress that these are not sure things. I mean, I'm, I'm showing pictures where this did work out. Um, and typically, more often than not, I found, I, I found that this does lead to a reversal. This is not going to work every time uh, because price could just be in a strong trend. But it's this kind of strategy that we can use for uh, trading stop loss hunts, mean reversion, for trading when we believe that consolidation or a, reversal is, or a reversal is already likely. We don't want to trade this if Bitcoin's in a very strong uptrend and you see all these coins liquidating shorts. There's really no reason to try to short uh, because the overall market's very bullish, just not, not a great idea. What we're looking for is really a divergence from XPT. So if we see that you know Ethereum, uh, Ethereum on most exchanges has just been flat, A. Eh? XPT is bullish or just flat. I mean, Bitcoin's just bullish or flat. And then you see this liquidation occur that's, actually, that's a pretty good sign that you may want to buy. But if you see XPT just dumping, if you see Ethereum on Binance, on Bitfinex just dumping, and then you see this liquidation, the price might just go lower. So keep, keep that in mind and you know never use this indicator by itself. Um, that would probably not be the greatest idea. Uh, yeah, and if we wanted to calculate, hey, you know how, how many Ethereum was that? I know some of you probably just only want to see the... Uh, the liquidations and that fun stuff, but you would just do 74,385, 74,385, divided by F or times F, divided by F. I think I got that right. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm using the wrong one. I'm using, I should be using the Bitmex one, not the Bitfinex one. It was 74,385. Yeah, 74. That's a lot of Ethereum, actually. 74,385. I feel like. Yeah, that is a lot. That's 637 Ethereum liquidated. Did I get that right? Yeah, that makes sense. Because Ethereum's priced at like 120-ish. Uh, so 
you know, 120 times 100 would be 12,000. So yeah, I, I, I guess this makes sense. It just seems like that's a lot of Ethereum being liquidated. So this is actually way more than I thought. 637 Ethereum liquidated apparently. Um, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big wrecked. Uh, right there at 116. So that would have been a pretty good spot to buy. And Ethereum currently is probably a lot higher than 116. Oh, actually, no, not a lot higher. <laughs> um, you can see the, li but the liquidation does occur here. Or no, it occurred, uh, I think I think I took the screenshot here-ish, actually. Yeah, uh, 20, what, 20 of January, three hours ago, 116 at 12 o'clock. Okay, so maybe, maybe it occurred somewhere around here. I did change the time zone uh, because I like to change the time zone to some different things. So I think it occurred actually around, around here maybe, and then price went back up. And then price liquidated more people, and then price went back up again. That makes sense. And price liquidated some people here too. But yep, that's just a handy dandy way you can calculate um, what, how much these liquidations are actually worth. And a thing that I wanted to show was I assumed that any 50x Ethereum trader had probably bought at that horizontal line because if you drop 0.95% down, that's where you get 116. Uh, so if you had gone 50 times leverage at 117.15, 117.1 by the looks of it there, uh, within this consolidation zone, you would have been liquidated. So if they had bought anywhere, you know, here-ish, they say, hey, reversal, I'm buying with buying 630 Ethereum or something, uh, then yeah, that happens. So, rip. Now here's another one that uh, was a lot of people getting, getting just wrecked on TRX on January 17th. You can see just liquidated short, liquidated short, liquidated short. Uh, from the prices of 658 to 665, as you can see, 658 to 665, this would be a pretty good spot to short. Uh, you can, it's kind of cut off down there, but it says liquidations began at 1049, 10, 1049 uh, uh, time zone, which is about here, on that price move up at 657, which is right there. And then liquidations ended at 1102, which is there, at 665 at, at almost the very top. This is just a great time to start to distribute. Uh, so if you're bearish, if you look at MDR, BAS, and if you're bearish on Bitcoin, then when price begins to just jack up on high volatility, on high volume, and begins to liquidate these traders, you know, this is the point in time where we're interested in, in, potentially, uh, in potentially putting in a few sell limit orders. And uh, if they get filled, you know, around here, that's great because then you get that. So that would have worked very well in TRX. Now, the one I just added uh, that I, I kind of showed before I added this like an hour ago, uh, we had two liquidated shorts at 118.05 uh, with a decent amount of volume, 138,000 and 56,000, as you can see down there, both at the price of 118.05. And those liquidations occurred on this candlestick here, high volume, high volatility, uh, price went up here, great time to begin thinking about limit selling or maybe even market selling, but uh, I would be careful. Limit selling would probably be, be better here. Even here, you may get your limit sell order filled. Market selling may be a little bit risky. Um, but yeah, this, this would have been great. You would have had an instant profit in, in this scenario. Uh, and then that was here. So the final case that I really want to make with these is that the market tends to hunt and move toward liquidity. So what, what's going to happen is as sinister as the market is, it's, it's going to liquidate and then move to the next liquidation here. Probably we had some liquidations here as well. It's going to, you know, it liquidated some traders here and then reverted back to the mean. We consolidated for a bit and then we liquidated some traders here and then liquidated some traders in this range. And, you know, the cycle continues. And with, with any strategy ever, uh, you always want to ask yourself, what is the edge of this strategy, you know, summarized in a few sentences? And if you can't explain to me what the edge of a strategy is it, in a few sentences, then there is no edge. Um, and I would say in a few sentences, what is the edge of finding, uh, finding liquidation prices for all coins and trading against them? My answer to that would be we're looking for spots, for, for price spots, where overleveraged traders are likely to be forced out of the market at the best possible price for the opposite party. 
And the opposite party here is a lot of the times going to be HFTs and those high frequency trading algorithms of bots who, I'm not saying BitMEX is guilty or anything here, but they're going to want to buy at the best possible short term price and they're going to want to sell at the best possible, um, you know, uh, short-term price um, uh, as they possibly can, best highest possible price they can. And to do that, you may want to look for a stop, you know, if I had access to it, I mean, and if, if BitMEX had access to it, then if they know where the stop losses are of other traders, if they know where the liquidation prices of other traders, they can just put limit orders or hidden limit orders in that area, watch them get liquidated, and then immediately come into profit. So my edge here is trading on the side of the traders who are burning these retail traders uh, and exploiting them. And I think that that kind of edge is a bit sinister, but it's an edge. And uh, with that, don't get liquidated. Let other people get liquidated. And uh, happy trading.